Hey Crossbridge, it's Wednesday. It's time for your soap update. Today you are in Luke chapter 6. And how amazing has the biography of Jesus been uh, this week? I I've been so just writing notes and diving in. And there's so many things in this biography that I'm loving. And so uh, today I kind of want to start out that every single Wednesday that I'm going to get a chance to be with you. I'm kind of going to go farmer on you, okay? There's stories and there's parables that Jesus tells that has everything to do with the agriculture, with plants and trees and things growing and all that in all the chapters that I get to do our soap videos. So I'm going to stick with a kind of farming theme with you every Wednesday. If you look at chapter six, there's this beautiful portion of scripture starting in verse 20. It's almost like a very condensed Sermon on the Mount. It has some Beatitudes in it, this love for your enemies, not judging people, all the things that Jesus says in Matthew chapter five, six, and seven in his long Sermon on the Mount are kind of condensed into a Reader's Digest version here. Version here. But there are three verses that I would love to draw your attention to today. And it's found in verses 43, 44, 45. It's a very short uh, story. It, Jesus says this, a good tree can't produce bad fruit and a bad tree can't produce good fruit. A tree is identified by its fruit. Figs are never gathered from thorn bushes and grapes are not picked from bramble bushes. A good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart. And an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. Now pick this up, pick this up. What you say flows from what's in your heart. Your translations may say, out of the overflow of the heart, the mouth speaks. And make no mistake, Jesus is really playing off something everyone would have understood. If you have an apple tree, you're not going to pick oranges off it, are you? No, you're going to get apples. A tree is going to give you the fruit that it is. And so he kind of makes the connection to you can say whatever you want to say about yourself, but you're out of your heart is how your mouth is going to speak. If you're an evil person, evil things come out of your mouth. If you are a, a kind person, a loving person, a good person, those are the things that come out of your mouth. And, and it should make us stop for a second and ask the question, how are our words? What kind of things flow out of our mouth when we aren't happy? When things don't go our way? Are our hearts filled with joy and thanksgiving and forgiveness or are they filled with poison and malice and anger? Do they bless or do they curse? Because we can say that we are disciples of Jesus. But if people can't tell by the way that we talk, by how we say things, I would almost argue by this passage that we probably have not given Christ full control of our life. What kind of tree are you today? How would you analyze your language? Maybe even the tougher question, if you can't figure that out, is find someone you trust. And maybe ask them, how's my tone been recently? Have I been more aggressive than normal? Have I been more kind than normal? Use your language today as a barometer of your steps towards Jesus. Does what you say look like what he says? A new creation, blessing and honoring and loving people? Or is it like that sinful self that we always deal with? Anger, bitterness, poison. Crossbridge, may your words look like Jesus. I love you. I miss you. And I can't wait to be with you on Sunday.